The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed Lemsellem, delivered a speech during the GCC parliamentary meeting in which he affirmed Bahrain's historical and firm stance in supporting the Palestinian cause and the legislative rights of the Palestinian people, which stems from the national constant towards major causes led by His Majesty the King and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. The Speaker noted that the Representatives Council decided to hold an exceptional session to discuss the developments in the Gaza Strip affirming Bahrain's firm stance towards the Palestinian cause, especially following the escalation of the Israeli war against the Palestinian people, the blockade on the Gaza Strip, the threat of a humanitarian catastrophe, and the violation of the international humanitarian law against innocent civilians in Gaza. Al Musallam hailed the royal directives to provide urgent aid to the Palestinians to support peace efforts as well as the right of the Palestinian people to an independent state with East Jerusalem as its capital. He reiterated Bahrain's call for the international community to urgently stop the war and escalation and to open urgent humanitarian corridors to deliver aid to the Gaza Strip and protect civilians. The Speaker of the Representatives Council and Chairman of the Executive Committee of the Parliamentary Division, Ahmed Al-Musallam, delivered a speech yesterday during the 17th meeting of the GCC Speakers of the Shura National and Parliamentary Councils. Al-Musallam affirmed that Bahrain, led by His Majesty the King and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, continues its reform approach and comprehensive developmental process to consolidate the values of peace, tolerance, coexistence and human rights, and the keenness on enhancing international partnership and respecting the principles of good neighborliness and non-interference in internal affairs. It also prioritizes enhancing Gulf integration and achieving a comprehensive peace in the region. He added that the Gulf cooperation methodology is a strategic choice and a main pillar for the future of GCC countries, affirming Bahrain's support for the endeavors aimed at developing the GCC parliamentary cooperation system. The Speaker stated that the regular meeting of the GCC Parliamentary Council continues the GCC countries' parliamentary process, which stems from the visions and directives of their leaders and the aspirations of their people. He expresses appreciation and gratitude for Saudi Arabia's leading role in maintaining security, stability and progress in the region. The Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa headed the Bahraini delegation participating in the GCC Interior Minister's meeting in Oman. The Minister delivered a speech on the occasion. I believe it is an attention to express the thanks and gratitude to the Sultan of Oman, the Sheikh, for his invitation to this meeting and for what we have seen from the kindness, the kindness, and the kindness of the guests. It also makes me proud to announce the Sultan's acceptance. لما يحظى به العمل الأمني الخليجي المشترك من دعم ورعاية واهتمام من لدن أصحاب الجلالة والسمو قادة دول مجلس التعاون لدول الخليج العربية حفظهم الله وحرصهم كل الحرص على تقوية العلاقات وتوحيد المواقف الخليجية والعربية وتعظيم مساحات التوافق مهما تقلبت الظروف وتعاظمت بما لدينا من مقومات مشتركة وركائز ثابتة في الدين واللغة والدم والقربة والأرض والإنسان وهذا كله يتطلب منا الحفاظ عليها في ظل تفاعل الظروف من حولنا وعدم السماح بالتشكيك بمواقفنا أو العبث بأمن واستقرار أوطاننا وفيما يتعلق بالأوضاع الراهنة في غزة فقد أكد سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة ملك مملكة البحرين المعظم حفظه الله ورعاه موقف مملكة البحرين من القضية الفلسطينية والذي يتمثل في دعم وتأييد جهود السلام الشاملة لإيجاد حل عادل لها وهو موقف ثابت لا حياد عنه وصولا إلى حل الدولتين وفق مبادرة السلام العربية وبما يضمن حق الشعب الفلسطيني الشقيق في إقامة دولته المستقلة وعاصمتها القدس الشرقية أصحاب السمو والمعالي الحضور الكريم في ظل عدم استقرار العمليات الجارية في غزة والظروف الدقيقة التي تمر بها المنطقة 
وما يصاحب ذلك من ترقب واستعداد أمني فإن ذلك يدفعنا نحو مزيد من التعاون والتكاتف الأمني وهو ما يؤكد أهمية التركيز على تنسيق الإسناد المتبادل لأغراض الحماية المدنية بين دول المجلس حيث أن الوضع الإقليمي والمتغيرات الأمنية ومبادئ النظام الأساسي لمجلس التعاون تستوجب تعزيز العمل الأمني الخليجي المشترك ومن منطلق الحرص على أمن واستقرار المجتمع الخليجي بشكل عام واستشعاراً لخطورة تنامي حالات الهجرة غير الشرعية بما تحمله من تداعيات سلبية عابرة للحدود وارتباطها بالجريمة المنظمة فقد تقدمت إلى مجلسكم الموقر بمقترح في هذا الشأن من أجل صياغة استراتيجية عمل مشتركة للتعامل مع الهجرة غير الشرعية لتكون أساساً لأي تشريعات مطلوبة تجاه ذلك للتعامل مع هذه الظاهرة في إطار إجراءات قانونية جديدة موحدة وفي الختام يطيب لي أن أشيد بنتائج الاجتماعات التي عقدتها فرق العمل المعنية والجهود الأمنية المشتركة من أجل تعزيز قدراتنا الأمنية في مواجهة التحديات متمنيا لاجتماعنا التوفيق والسداد لإنجاح مسيرتنا الأمنية الخليجية المشتركة والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته A number of topics were discussed during the meeting that aimed to enhance the GCC joint action and was agreed to adopt the Unified Gulf Tourist Visa Study, the establishment of a joint committee for law enforcement officials to combat corruption in the GCC and complete the project to electronically link traffic violations in the GCC. The winners of the Prince Nayef Award for Security Research were also honored. The minister was accompanied by the Ambassador of Bahrain to Oman, the ministry's undersecretary and a number of seniors officials. Southern Governor His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa visited the Camping Service Center to review its readiness for the camping season 2023-2024 and services quality provided to the campers. The Southern Governor hailed the directives of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to coordinate with competent bodies for a successful camping season, which was announced by His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa in addition to the allocation of a weekly financial prize for the best camp. He was briefed on the preparations and services provided to the campers. He hailed the readiness of the security bodies, General Directorate of Civil Defense, General Directorate of Traffic, Southern Governorate Police Directorate, General Directorate of National Ambulance, and a Southern Municipality, and the community partnership to achieve a safe and organized camping season. His Highness was also briefed on the progress of the registration process through Khayyam uh, initiatives available through El Janubi app, which provides a 100% online registration and transaction service. This came as part of the Southern Governor's efforts in a digital transformation and facilitation of the registration procedures provided to citizens. The number of registered campers for this season reached 3,387, an increase of 25% of the total campers. 
The Ministry of Housing and Urban Planning and the Del Mongate Company signed contracts to implement 131 new housing units in Selman Town. In light of the Ministry's plan to implement the projects under the Government Land Development Program in partnership with the private sector. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Rameh, stated that under the agreement, the company will build units with a total area of 23,000 square meters, noting that the units will be at least 220 square meters. She added that after completing the construction, of the units, the developer shall sell them to the citizens benefiting from the housing financing program, provided that the unit prices do not exceed 98,000 Bahraini dinars. She noted that the project site has all infrastructure services, which will contribute to expediting its implementation. The minister said that the implementation of the project in Salman Town is the first in a series of other projects included in the program's master plan, following the success of its pilot phase, during which 132 housing units were built in the Sahil housing project. The National Audit Office is keen on the optimal use of public funds by ensuring the rights of the people and the sustainability of resources. More in this report. In order to consolidate the principles of integrity and emphasize the importance of developing government work processes, the National Audit Office submits its 20th annual report for the year 2022 to 2023. The audit work completed by the NAO included various economic, social and service sectors, making the report one of the most important national achievements in implementing plans and programs that ensure the effective management of all resources. The trust of the government, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, was reflected in the efforts of the NAO employees and their excellence in working efficiently and professionally by adopting the best practices in administrative and financial procedures. This confirms the high sense of responsibility shown by the various national cadres within Team Bahrain to perform tasks with the highest level of efficiency. According to the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, all the observations in the NAO's report are addressed firmly, which leads to the optimal use of public funds and contributes to the sustainability of resources for the benefit of the people. The NAO has achieved remarkable development and growth since it was established in 2002 by carrying out all types of audit tasks based on global standards issued by INTOSAI. The Bahrain Institute for a Political Development organized a lecture on political rights in the constitutional and legal system presented by a member of the Shura Council, Ali Al-Aradi, more in this report. As part of the National Awareness Program offered by the Bahrain Institute for Political Development to all segments of society, the Institute presented the awareness lecture entitled Political Rights in the Constitutional and Legal System as part of the program's activities with broad youth participation, which includes awareness seminars that keep pace with developments and events on the local level. The awareness lecture touched on a number of main topics, including the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King in supporting public rights and freedoms, most notably political rights, the constitutional and legal framework for political rights in the kingdom, the most important features on the law on the exercise of political rights, and national mechanisms and institutions that support political rights. The National Awareness Program aims to spread awareness among all segments of society about political developments and events in the kingdom, raise awareness of constitutional and political rights, and support positive and effective political participation in the democratic process. The Kingdom of Bahrain is preparing to host a number of events in November in various fields and sectors, including economic, cultural, political and sporting aspects. More in this report. In November, the Kingdom of Bahrain will witness a number of major events in various fields, which contribute to developing the role of the tourism sector by diversifying sources of income and supplying the national economy, in accordance with the objectives of the Tourism Strategy 2022-2026 to and enhancing the Kingdom's position as the most attractive destination in the region. Exhibition World Bahrain will host three exhibitions, Cityscape Bahrain, Jewelry Arabia and the Perfume Expo. The Kingdom of Bahrain is set to host the three-on-three -three basketball world tour and the Bahrain Endurance Race at Bahrain International Circuit. The Kingdom will also host the annual Security Summit Manama Dialogue, which will discuss various topics, most notably the challenges of global navigation, regional competition in this aspect, energy security, new policies regarding it, in addition to strategic capabilities and many others. 
The Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities is also preparing to launch a number of cultural events, and the Sheikh Ibrahim Center for Culture and Research will hold seven different events throughout the month. Aldana Amphitheater will also hold various musical concerts, and the Mara'i Animal Production Show will return in its sixth edition. All of these vibrant events make the Kingdom of Bahrain the first choice in attracting tourists from all over the world. The Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority, BTEA, CEO Dr. Nasser Ali Al-Qadi confirmed uh, that Bahrain is keen to intensify efforts to further strengthen the tourism sector and establish more quality touristic facilities aimed at raising the rate of tourists in the kingdom. More in this report. For the second day in a row, Bahrain's pavilion at the World Travel Market showcased the latest offers in tourism, travel and air transport packages which comes as part of Bahrain Tourism and Exhibition Authority participation in the WTM 2023 held in London from November 6th to 8th. The participating tourism entities displayed their distinctive tourism products among large public turnout reflecting the warmth and interest of European tourists in Bahrain's tourism. As visitors flock to the Bahraini Pavilion, the organizers were keen to offer them souvenirs and introduce them to the various products and services offered which reflected the warm Bahraini hospitality. The World Travel Market provides an ideal opportunity for direct engagement with relevant stakeholders and promotes the latest developments in the tourism and hospitality sector in Bahrain. The Kingdom's participation in the event aimed to enhance the tourism sector, attract investments and raise the status of the Kingdom on the international level.